Hi everybody, happy Monday. Um, I hope you guys are having a great start to your week. I missed you guys last week. I really appreciate your patience um, with me as I was on vacation and we had our little recorded video, which was good, um, but um, I much prefer hanging out with you guys in person. <laughs> so, um, so when you hop on, say hey. I would love to see who's here live. Wendy's already here from New Jersey. That's awesome. We are live right now. I am live. There's just one of me. <laughs> I'm live right now in our Facebook group and on my YouTube channel. So if you're watching on YouTube, welcome also. And I would love um, for you to say hi as well. That chat is open and available too. So super fun. Valerie's here. Glad you survived the Arizona heat. You are telling me, Valerie, I feel like something crazy happened and it was insanely hot while we were there. Um, and now it's getting back to normal. My dad said that it's going to be like 100 on Wednesday. So I feel a little bit like we were tortured for no reason <laughs> because it was insanely hot while we were there last week. So, I mean, we didn't die or anything, but <laughs> it was a little bit on the toasty side. And Leslie's here. Welcome back. Thanks, Leslie. And Dina's here. Hey, Dina. Oh, it's so nice to see you guys. Um, so we had such a great time last week so we got to Arizona and um, my kids got there the same day we got there and we were able to hang out with my mom and dad and my sister and her husband a little bit and um, and enjoy the new fiance status that um, my son and his fiance have so that was really fun um, we went up to the Grand Canyon and it was cooler up there um, and fortunately it was busy we went on so we go Sunday or Monday Monday um, last Monday and it was busy but not crazy busy so you could see that it was um, kind of a picking up um, and I loved seeing it was so fun just to see everybody's like smiling faces it felt like people were smiling more it was like oh I can actually see that you're smiling because you know everybody's outdoors and and no masks or anything like that so we really just had such a great time so and it had been years since I'd been to the canyon so that was really fun um, so we kind of drove from one we didn't go to the north rim which is on the other side but we kind of went all along where the south rim is and um, you know all the little lookouts and stuff like that and we saw elk and um, just had a great time so it was really fun so and we drove all around Flagstaff that's where my husband and I went to school uh, for college and so we were able to take the kids all around they'd been through the university before but it was really fun to go back and see all of the changes because gosh it feels like well it's been a really long time since I was in college we're not gonna talk about that though but <laughs> it was really fun to see all the changes and so we just had a great time and just enjoyed time with family and um, just really had fun so oh and Allison says it's still hot in Arizona it is still hot I realize that I think it's supposed to be a little better than it was last week though I was seeing like low hundreds as opposed to like 117 that we had while we were there so and I realized at that point once you're over 100 it's kind of like well it's just degrees of very hot and very very hot <laughs> so it's crazy um, so I hope that you guys are all um, doing super fun and um, are enjoying um, the sew along. I am loving seeing all your blocks. If you are sewing along with us and you haven't posted a photo yet, um, please do so we can cheer you on and see what you're doing and say yay. <laughs> um, if you're running into problems, definitely post that too. We would love to help you out. Um, and for those of you who say that you're behind, you're going to get a little lecture because we don't do that in this group. There's no like time schedule. Okay, yes, I'm going through each block a week, um, but that is just how it's working out. Um, that doesn't mean you have to finish your blocks every week. Um, these videos aren't going to go away. They're going to be available in the group um, even, you know, if, if you want to sew three years from now, they'll still be here. So, um, don't feel like you're having to rush to keep up or anything like that. Um, and there's just no like deadlines here. So don't feel stressed if you are not on the shoe fly blocks already. That's totally fine. You can still watch the videos and, and then um, if you need to um, go back for a refresher, you know, if you don't get to this for a month or whatever your schedule's like. So 
We're not doing any of that late stuff in here. <laughs> so, um, so, oh, I didn't scroll down. Happy Monday. It's cold here in Minnesota. Is it, Don says it's cold in, are you cold, Don? What is cold in Minnesota for the first day of summer? I would love to know. And Mary says, glad to see me. Thanks, Mary. I'm super happy you're here too. Okay, so let's talk about all the fun things. If you are new, what we are making is the Swing on a Star quilt. That's the quilt hanging behind me here. It is one of the quilts that I designed to go with my current collection, Stardust. Um, and so we are sewing through a block a week, and I'm gonna pop the schedule up here so you can see what we're doing. Oh, not that schedule. Okay, so something, so never mind. I'm not doing that. We're gonna talk about this. <laughs> I changed something and it apparently changed everything. So I'm not gonna pop the schedule up, but we are on week four. We are going to sew one more block next week and then we're gonna start assembly and border. So we still have several weeks in, or I think there's probably three weeks in the sew long after this week. Next week is our big, large patchwork star blocks. Those are here, so, and there's only two of those. And then we're gonna assemble the top and which actually goes together pretty quickly because the blocks are 12 and a half inch um, unfinished blocks, except for our big guy. Um, and then putting borders on. So um, if you are wanting to stay up with the timing, <laughs> you definitely can um, catch up, especially um, this week we only have two blocks to make. Next week there's only two blocks to make. Even though it's bigger, it does sew together pretty quickly. Um, and then, um, then we'll start assembly. So it'll be really fun. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna talk about what's coming up, a little sneak peek for our Christmas in July project, our next sew along. So really, really fun. So this is what we're making this week. We are going to be doing the shoe fly star. So there's a little shoe fly block in the middle and then the rest of it is a star block and it goes together pretty fast. So we're gonna sew through that in just a second, but I think we should do giveaways first. So last week during the recorded video, Stephanie, I'm so glad you're here. You're not late. Uh, Wendy said she should have read the schedule. I cut the fabric for next week's block for today. Oh, Wendy, I have done that many times. In fact, I did that, I think it was last month for the RBD block challenge, the Riley Blake block challenge and um, I had to scramble <laughs> and make up the um, other one. So it was it's all good. And you can make this week's next week and next week's this week. It's all fun. Um, Dawn says it's 64 degrees, but it has been in the high 90s in Minnesota. My goodness, 64 is chilly for summer. That's fun. And it also, I should pre warn you guys, it is um, thunderstorming outside right now. And so hopefully we don't lose power. Um, my fingers and toes are all crossed that that does not happen. So let's talk about giveaways. Um, last week during the recorded video, the giveaway prize was a roly poly of Stardust. So you can kind of see the fun colors there. The same fabrics we're using for this quilt behind me, but this is roly poly form, which is a two and a half inch strip roll. There's um, 40, are there 40 or 42? I can never remember the difference. Um, I think 40 strips in here that are two and a half inches wide by the width of the fabric. So two and a half inch by 40, if you are new to the pre-cuts. Um, so this is the same as a jelly roll in Moda, but we call them roly polies. So you get a Stardust roly poly, and you get my Perry, Penny Serenade uh, quilt pattern, which is designed for roly polies. And um, this is a really fun one. It goes together super fast because you sew these strips together and then you cut out the shapes and then sew them together. It uses my acrylic templates, which if you already have them, um, you can use them for this quilt. Uh, but it comes with the paper templates too. I'm out of stock of the acrylic templates because there was some problems in the port um, with um, some of Riley Blake's notions and they were stuck. I think they're very close to being um, unstuck. <laughs> I think they were estimating hopefully by the middle of July. So I'm waiting to hear on that, but hopefully we'll have those in very soon. Um, but if not, you have the paper templates in here so you can get going. And you get a little bookshop enamel charm, which is one of my new uh, Main Street charms. And these are super cute for hanging on backpacks or project bags, or if you just wanna put them on your keychains, they come with a little gold clasp. 
so really easy and fun to use. And our winner of that is Fran Williams Sanchez. Fran, you're our winner. I'm going to tag you in the video if you're not watching, and um, you can send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com, and you can send me your mailing address, and I will get this out in the mail to you this week. So that's from last week. Hey, And then this week, we have something fun. If you guys um, are familiar with Fat Quarter Shop, you know that they do the um, sew sampler boxes, which is like a monthly subscription. And it's just like a month, a present every month <laughs> that you sort of pay for. So it's like discounted prices on, um, you get this like mystery box every month. It's so fun. I do it. Um, that's where I get a lot of our prizes. Like, um, cause I, I pay for this every month and then I'll pull prizes out of it, um, for our little giveaways. So if you're ever curious where those come from, a lot of them come from the sew sampler box, but I thought it would be fun to give away an entire sew sampler box. So this is January's and um, of this year's. So if you already have it, um, that's a duplicate for you and we can work something else out. Now it's also, it's the sweater weather box, but um, we're just gonna pretend that that's, it's not very sweatery, maybe for Dawn in Minnesota. <laughs> so, oh, hi, Carrie's here. Oh, um, yes. Oh, fun. I love reading all you guys' comments. Jan bought the book charm for her granddaughter who is a bookworm. She loves it. Yay! I'm a bookworm too, if you guys didn't know that. So, sweater weather. The project in here is not just wintry, so that's why I went ahead and did this one. But um, the first thing in here, I have a little, it comes with a little guide of what all the projects are or the items. So it's a honey bun and the fabric is cider. So you can kind of see it's like peaches and blues and um, some golds. It's just a really pretty collection. This is by um, Basic Gray for Moda and it's um, a honey bun, if you're not familiar with it, is basically half of a roly-poly. So it's like you take the roly-poly I think it's one and a half, so it's not quite half. Like a roller pulley's two and a half inch strips, this is one and a half inch strips. So really fun. Um, so you get a whole um, roly, uh, honey bun. And then there is this really cute cutting mat cleaner. So you guys know, uh, we always have to clean our cutting mats, so there's a little um, sponge that's perfect for that. There are um, heat resistant cool pins. So these pins, you don't have to worry about pressing. You can leave them in and they won't melt. So I think that's really clever. And they match the honey bun, which I love. And then these little sew tights, which are magnetic sewing pins. So if you have something like you're working with leather or something that you don't want to pierce the fabric through, these are great. So little um, magnetic, double magnets um, sewing pins. And then in every box you get a pattern that goes with the um, fabric that's always in. So every box has some kind of fabric cut in it, usually pre-cuts, um, and then you get a pattern to go with it. So it's this really pretty, it's called a fast and flurious, which we're going to pretend it's snowy outside because it's so hot. Um, <laughs> but it is this really cute table runner, you can see it from the back. And um, there's also a way to make a throw version, but you have to buy extra fabric for that. So it comes with all the instructions to make the table runner, or you can use the fabric in there for whatever you would like. And then there's also a little, they have an ongoing um, project that is um, over a period of time, and so you get a piece of that. So this is a really cute little block in their greatest hits quilt. So all of that comes in the box, and I am going to tape up this box and mail it to one of you. <laughs> so you get all of that, it's really fun. And it has little information and on everything on this little thing. So you can check out the extra fabric and all that sort of thing if you want to. So all you have to do to enter to win the giveaway for the week, we're just gonna close that like that and pretend that that's what we meant to do. I'm gonna put this down here, um, is to, um, comment. It's super easy. Um, I can't tell, I can tell how many people are watching, but I can't tell um, who you are. So to enter, you have to leave a comment and um, that's your entry into the giveaway. I just count up all the comments and then I put the number in the random number generator and it gives me the number and then I count again and find that number and that's how I pick the winner. So really easy to do. 
Um, and that works if you are watching on Facebook or if you are watching on YouTube. So make sure that you're commenting. And it works if you're watching live or if you are watching later down the week. So the giveaway is open for a week. It's open till the next Monday. Um, so you can comment at any time. So super easy to do and really fun. And um, I just love doing these giveaways with you guys. So I hope you guys like it too. All right. So you ready guys? Ready to sew? I'm ready to sew. Okay. We are making the shoe fly block, as I said. So this block is similar to the others in that there's um, you know, the main, this is the same fabric that I used in my border. So I'm using it on these star points to kind of tie everything together. And there's green corners on this little star and then there's a little shoe fly block in the center. And by now we're getting close to the end. So you'll be able to see like what fat quarters, if you purchased the kit, what fat quarters you have a lot of extra fabric of. So feel free to get creative with your prints. You'll need to keep your stars points the same blue um, prints, but you can change up everything else if you want. And you can even add like some of the light um, floral backgrounds um, if you want to put them in the shoe fly block or whatever. So get creative with it if you would like to. Oh, and you guys, I have a confession to make. I couldn't believe it. I went to sew up this week's block and I was looking at last week's block, which is, well, I moved it. Y'all, <laughs> I don't know. I was so worried about getting everything ready for um, the trip and prepping everything ahead of time that I wasn't even paying attention to my background fabric on the last two blocks. So I'm also sewing with Stardust along with the Riley Blake challenge and I'm using vintage white background for those blocks. This block, this whole quilt is a white background, but I mixed <laughs> I mixed it up and I've made the last two weeks of our quilt with a vintage white background. So my project for this week before I assemble the quilt in two weeks is to remake those blocks, which is fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> but I wanted to confess all and let you know that if those uh, backgrounds looked a little funky last week and the week before that was because I messed up <laughs> so now we are back on track and we are using a white background for our blocks as we are supposed to and by we I mean me because <laughs> I messed it up <laughs> so there's that um and um uh, yeah, so we're going to start sewing and I did just the tiniest bit of prep this week because um, I just felt like um, it would speed our um, video along just the tiniest bit. So you're going to need um, a marker or if your um, machine has a laser, you can use that and you are going to need a rotary cutter and a mat to do a little bit of trimming just like on a lot of the other blocks. So those are the extra things you're going to need before we get going and I'm going to switch cameras so you can see me and what I'm doing and then we're going to get started. So, ah, I can't run my mouse on my sewing machine. Okay, here we are. So now we're all set. Okay, I love this little pink mat for cutting. It's super fun. I'm going to move over so you guys can see me a little bit better and so I can sew. Okay, so we are going to start with the star points on our blocks. Oh. And that is, um, I'll show you on the finished block. So that is these corners here. So we're going to make these. And I've prepped a couple of them for you, but we're going to start with this one here. I'm going to move that out of the way. So what you're going to need is your background fabric and your um, your print for your, um, and I have dog hair on mine. <laughs> um, okay, so what we're going to do is you can draw a diagonal line on the back, the wrong side of these. Um, I'm not gonna go ahead and do that because I have a little laser on my machine that I'm gonna show you guys. Can you see my laser? So this is the Baby Lock Crescendo and it has this little laser guide. So for stitch and flip, like we're doing here, it um, makes it really easy to sew because you don't have to mark these. So we're going to place these, and I'm kind of going out of order here a little bit, but I'm starting with these and that's 
east. So I'm placing this on my background fabric on the left side and we're going to sew from the top left corner to the bottom right corner and I'm going to use my laser as a guide and I'm just lining it up point to point. And I'm also making sure with my fabric, I wasn't super, like I didn't fussy cut these for the florals but I do want to make sure that my um, pieces that are folded over are pretty. So like if we fold this one to double check, we do have a nice selection of prints. But if we were to put it this way, it's not as, it just doesn't have as much print in it. So I'm just kind of double checking like, hmm, which way, what do I want to see here? And I think I like the way I had it before so that you get a little bit more of that gold so you get this blue flower and you get the gold and it kind of just fills up the space a little bit more. You don't have to do that, but I do like to just maximize what's showing um, and what's going to be left. So I'm going to sew my seam here. I think I see okay. Um, there we go. All right, and if you have questions, holler. Oh, Stephanie said I get to make something extra with the mixed up blocks. Yes, Stephanie, that's a genius idea. So I have the vintage backgrounds and I should make something cute like a table runner or a pillow or something with the blocks that I have. That is a very good idea. All right, so we're going to sew down here. And I'm using my little laser. You can see the laser. just going to sew there so now you can see if I move this up without making you dizzy you can see that this seam is sewn here you guys see that okay okay so I'm going to scooch this back just a little bit let's see Jan said I know the floral was used on block three if I use the floral border in the kit will I come up short for the border um, you shouldn't. Um, it's all the same fabric. So there is floral for in a fat quarter, but there should be floral in the border and you should be fine with that because you're also going to use the floral in the um, star points for the big large patchwork stars that we're going to do next week. So I factored all that in. You can always cut your border fabric if you want to just to make sure you're okay. But, um, but I factored in that all of the blue floral should be fine with all those star blocks. You let me know if that doesn't happen, um, Jan, but we should be okay there. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and I am going to trim off this end and I just turn that a little bit this way and I line up my, um, I'm lining up my quarter inch, so this is a quarter inch past the seam and I'm going to cut this off at a weird angle. There we go. So now I've trimmed, and when I press this, it makes the left side of the star block. So I'm going to press, and I'm gonna speak up a little bit, because somebody said when I iron, you can't hear me. So I'm sorry about that. I also moved my mic a little bit over, so hopefully that doesn't um, cause a problem. So here's our side, our left side, and now we're going to do the exact same thing with the right side. And I'm just going to double check where I want this placed. Um, I think we're going to go like this. That's pretty. Um, so now I'm going to place this on the right side, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Sew down from, but I'm sewing from the top right corner to the bottom left corner. And this makes those star points that we're gonna use. Sorry, you guys can't see what I'm doing. I forget. <laughs> so this makes those star points that are on the star block, um, makes it really easy to do. So there we go. There's our little star piece. And I'm going to trim again so I'm just going to place that there. And I'm going to cut this off. Okay. So now we have um, this other corner 
and we're going to press this down and we're pressing towards the um, print fabric and these should be the same size once you've sewn on the points or this you know these two sides which make up the points as they were when they started so um, if you look up the background fabric it should be that same size piece when you're done so you're going to need four of those for this block and um, I've done a few of those ahead of time so we're not sewing quite so much so um, you can um, chain piece these you're making two total two of these blocks correct yes two of these blocks so you know make all of them so you need eight total for two blocks four on each block so go ahead and make them all at once that way um, you're not um, having to do everything for one block and then go back and do everything again so I'm going to set these to the side and now we are going to start our corner pieces. So what we're making are these little green um, points that point in towards our star center. So it's made with the same concept where um, I'm not going to draw the line if you um, don't have the laser so you're going to draw a marked line on your background fabric from corner to corner and this is a non-directional fabric so it doesn't really matter um, how it's aligned but I'm going to sew these two together they're right sides together and somebody asked about the white fabric um, on these white fabrics I don't really worry about what's right side and wrong side because they're the same if you're using like a um, uh, like a tone on tone or something that is a right side you'll want to pay attention to that but when it's just a solid I don't really worry about what is right and wrong on these fabrics because it works out to be the same so I've sewn our little seam here goes down the center from here to here and I'm going to trim off one side I'm going to turn my ruler so it's facing the correct way and we're going to trim that off and now we have a little half square triangle that um, we made super easy and we're going to press okay and now um, I already have these done the other three done <clears throat> excuse me so I like to assemble these in the direction that they're going to go in my block so that I can make sure that they're aligned correctly. Now if you don't want to do that you don't have to um, because you're basically making so I just like to have these um, short sides to the inside so it's to the inside on all three of these so this next one I will sew here so that it's to the inside and then I like the longer piece you know to the top or bottom depending upon where it is but as long as your green section points in it doesn't matter because when it's all quilted um, it's gonna look the same you're not gonna be able to tell that maybe you know you did this and this like does that make sense when you're looking at it now you can't really tell that the long is now towards the the middle part not towards the bottom or the top but this is just how I like to make sure that it's keeping it all organized and because I'm in the habit of doing it this way if I'm working with a directional print it's easier for me to keep track of how it should look in the block so that's entirely up to you if you want to take the time to do this you don't have to um, but I'm just kind of showing you my method so now that we've made this half square triangle I'm going to show so the shorter piece to the right side of that little mini block there I'm gonna bring you over here I hope the moving of the camera doesn't make you guys crazy if it does please let me know okay let's see everybody good okay and Dina asked if the blocks were the same as last week except for the middle and that is correct they are the exact same as last week last week had the patchwork in the center and this week the shoe fly block is in the center so um, and that's why in the instructions um, I can tell I tell you to make it the same as the small star patchwork block we're gonna do the exact same thing next week except we're kind of combining elephants it's elephants 
element. <laughs> oh, um, so, and the churn dashes will be, in, well, the little, like, shoe fly thing will be in the centers. Churn dash and shoe fly just make me think of the same thing. They're very similar. Anyway, the shoe fly will be in the corners, and then um, we're going to make a big star, and it'll have the patchwork in the center, and I'm going to take a drink here really quick because my throat's getting scratchy. Sorry. Today I'm drinking banana coffee and it is lovely. So, do you guys like flavored coffee? I I am a flavored coffee girl. I like regular coffee if I can only, you know, if it's that choice between no coffee or regular, but I much prefer flavored. <laughs> so, I just sewed um, a seam down here on the right side and I've um let's take that off. And so now we've got our little um, short piece that is the same length as our half square triangle. So now I'm going to press. Sorry, I'm all over the place today, guys. I'm just excited to be back here with you. <laughs> so now I'm going to sew the longer piece, which is the, let's see, G. So this is the F and now we're putting the G pieces and I'm gonna put it on the bottom because again, on my layout, I want that longer piece on the bottom. So I'm going to sew here Let me see if I can get that little, little bit more space for you guys. Um, so I'm going to sew that along the bottom side. Did I answer the question? Everybody good? Like, oh, vanilla or chocolate coffee, please. Michelle, yes! <laughs> Miss Stephanie's gonna leave the elephants out. I appreciate that, Stephanie. <laughs> I love you guys, this is so fun. Um, okay, so now I have sewn the bottom piece here and I'm going to press. And that will give us our four corner pieces of our star block. Just like last week, except that we are using green fabric this week. If you are using the kit, um, I switched out to a green fabric in the pattern instead of the gold. So. Um, so I'm going to set these aside and now we are going to work on the shoe fly center. So for that we need a center piece and then we need our four corner fabrics which are going to be this cute flamingo and you guys can see the sheen really cute now. Oh there you go. Isn't that fun? I love these. I love the antique gold glitter in this. Um, it's really a fun, that's a fun touch. So we are gonna do the exact same thing that we did with that corner star, um, the star corner pieces, but we're gonna do that with the shoe fly pieces and we are going to place these right sides together um, with the white and I'm going to sew from corner to corner. And again, if you don't have the laser, you're gonna mark these first so that you have nice straight lines or you can be a rebel and just go for it. But <laughs> sometimes it's hard to eye that. So for all four of these pieces, I'm going to sew a diagonal line um, with the background fabric and the print and I'm going to chain piece these together. So we're going to just make four of these at once and I'm going to move this over here so you can see it. And I'm just going to kind of go through all these. Who else is a big coffee drinker? Oh, she li Dawn likes her coffee strong. I, I'm not super on strong. Like I, I like it Actually, I just, I'll just say it. I like it a little weaker because, oh, my stomach can't handle the really strong stuff. So that's kind of why I've stopped drinking coffee at Starbucks because it isn't pleasant very often for me. <laughs> it's just more information than you guys need to know. <laughs> oh. Okay, so that was the third one. Now we have one more. And Stephanie said, realized she could have just left it. Left what, Stephanie? I missed it. Um, uh, let's see. Wendy says she's a tea drinker, but she does enjoy flavors. I am a big tea drinker, too. I, I, I drink tea all day, except for um, at lunch. I have two coffees with lunch, um, and that's because I don't eat breakfast. Um, we do um, intermittent fasting. So we don't eat after dinner until uh, until lunch. So I don't eat breakfast. Um, so that's when I have my coffee because 
I can't drink coffee black, so I have to put the cream in it and I don't want the calories before lunch, so that's why I have my coffee at lunch. So now I've done that with, um, I've sewn that diagonal seam on all four of these blocks. I'm gonna scooch this back a little bit and we're gonna trim these off just like we did with that corner piece. So, and I am um, a bit lazy when it comes to trimming things. So I do two at once. Now, if you do this and it is off, please don't send me an email and say, hey, I cut my, my blocks and they were off. But <laughs> this is how I line up and I make sure my corners are all the same. And so I line it up with the seam and then I cut two at once because all this trimming can get a bit monotonous. So now I've cut two. You can see they're both fine. Um, and I'm gonna do the same thing with these two. I'm lining up, my seams are going the same direction and my corners are lined up so they're nice and straight. And I'm going to place this dotted line on the seam and that gives me a quarter inch seam allowance. And now all four are trimmed. So I'm going to open these up and press, and I'm going to press them towards the print fabric. So I do that a lot when I'm doing the stitch and flip method as well. Um, like for these, um, if I have several of these to do, I will trim two of those at a time as well. I just make sure that they are lined up. That's the biggest key because then you don't have to, um, it just saves you a little bit on cutting and you don't have to trim quite as much. I mean, you're still trimming off the ends, but you're just doing it double the work, double the time, half the work. <laughs> okay, everybody hanging in there? So now we have um, four of these cute little half square triangles and I'm going to lay them out in my block format. We don't need that anymore. Let's see, can you guys see? Actually, I don't think we need the whole cutting mat anymore. Let me just get things where I can reach them. Okay, so we're gonna lay this out in the format of the block, which is the shoe fly block in the center. And I'm, so I'm taking all my points, and this is a non-directional print. They're just, our little flamingos are going every which way, so I'm not worrying about how that looks. So that's the layout of the block, and now I'm going to place my background pieces in those empty spots. These are the H background pieces. So those measurements are, again, they're in your pattern. The pattern is linked in today's video. So that if you don't have it, you will um, need to pick it up because I, in my videos, I don't give measurements. Um, so you'll have to pick up the pattern if you want to sew along with us. Um, so this is what the block looks like. And now I'm going to chain piece this block together in the method that we've done the other. So basically we're making a nine patch again, just like last week, but we've turned our corner pieces into um, half square triangles. So it's a different look completely but it's the exact same method as last week with the nine patch, which was kind of that patchworky feel. Okay, so here we go. Now I'm just going to sew. So I'm sewing the middle to the left block for the top row. I'm not going to cut my fabric. Um, I'm going to take the middle and left in the middle row, center and left in the middle row and I'm going to keep going and same with the last row I'm taking that center piece placing it on the left for the bottom row there and then I'll flip my threads so they're kind of held together by those little chain piecing that was an interesting sound so you can see they're held together by the chain piecing and when we open it up it's all there but they're kind of held in place and I like the organization of that when I'm doing multiple blocks this way I do cut them between blocks so if I'm say we're making two of these I'll do this set of three then I'll cut my thread and do the next set of three for the other block because that way my blocks aren't getting confused as far as what goes with what so um, this is the the first three rows so now I'm going to do the exact same thing but I'm opened it up and I'm going to lay these on the middle pieces for that 
center section. So same thing, I'm sewing the left to the middle, opening this up so I'm sewing it to the gold here. And, oh, we've got some friends on YouTube. Hey, Teresa and Mary and Becky's here. Oh, Becky's in the Netherlands. Yay, Becky, that's super fun. And Valerie's in Katy, Texas. Oh, and she likes my nail polish. Thanks so much, Valerie. My husband says they look like Easter eggs. He says I've completely done them in the wrong month, um, which I kind of agree with, except that I really like the color, so I don't, I don't care. <laughs> don't care if they should have been in March. Feels summery to me. <laughs> so now I'm doing the same thing with that little last row. I'm hopping over the seam allowance so it lays flat. That's what that little skip was. And then now we have the rows of our shoe fly all sewn together and held together with our little strings. So I'm going to press these and the pressing instructions are in your book but we are pressing out. We're pressing out and then in and then out so that our seams nest together. And you can do it whichever way you like. Um, you can press towards the inside or the outside on each row. For this one, it doesn't really matter, but you'll just want to alternate with your row so that those seams nest together. It will give you a much um, flatter uh, block and your seams will lay together flatter if you nest your seams. So I'm flipping this and pressing again because I like to press from the back side and the front side. I gave it a little shot with my um, starch so that it lays nice and flat and pretty. So here's our block and now we're going to flip down this side and sew the top row to the middle row. And I am going to go ahead and pin. I've kind of nested. You can do that with your fingers. You feel until the seams are nested together like that. So you kind of practice that if you haven't done that before. And I am just going to um, put two little pins in here so that it lays nice and flat. And I remembered my pin cushion this time, guys. <laughs> so. Here we go. Now we're just going to sew down those seams. I'm pulling out my pins as I go because I don't want to sew over them. And this is sewing the top row to the middle row. So I'll open that up and show you guys. Well, there we go. So now the top row is sewn and we're gonna do the exact same thing with the bottom row. I'm just flipping it so that I can um, do it a little bit easier, but we're gonna flip that bottom row and sew it to the center. And again, just matching up those seams, making sure that they're laying nice and flat together. That one's a little bit wonky. Those, not cutting those strings in between or the threads in between um, helps those seams nest together so that um, you're not kind of all over the place with your um, seams. But I also don't stress a whole lot. Like I want my seams to look nice. Um, of course everybody does. But if they're not 100% perfect, really don't stress about that. <laughs> um, life is too short for me to worry about all of my seams being exactly perfect. Um, I, that's just me. It might drive you nuts that I don't do that. <laughs> You're welcome to make your quilts perfect. <laughs> I don't. Um, so here's our cute little shoe fly block in the center. And now I'm going to press, um, and I'm pressing these, um, seams to the outer edges here. And I don't know. I just have too much fun with quilting for it to be like a stress thing for me as far as having everything be exactly perfect when and I'm and and that's just my personality like I'm not a super big perfectionist um so I think if I really really stressed about that kind of thing um it would take some of the fun out of it for me <laughs> so 
Oh, Jan said the polish matches the floral print this week. That's true, it kind of does, look at that. I totally coordinated that on purpose. That was my master plan all along. Jan figured it out earlier. <laughs> so she tried um, on her last blocks and it worked great. Thanks for the idea. Yay, Jan, I'm so glad. Hey, Roxy, welcome to the video. <laughs> and Wendy's doesn't worry about um, perfect quilts either. It's gonna snow in July in New Jersey. Yes, amen to that, Wendy. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing that um, we did with the smaller version is we are going to line up our block pieces for assembly. So now we've gotten to the fun part where it starts to actually look like a quilt block, yay. So I'm taking my star points and putting them at the top and bottom and on each side. And now I've got my little corner pieces. And remember you want your triangles or your half square triangles to point in towards your block. And so now everything is laid out there you go. Yeah, you can see. That's how our block looks. And we're basically going to assemble this just like we did with the little shoe fly block in the center. We're going to treat it like a big nine patch because that's basically what we've made is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, they're not all exactly the same size, but it is the same method. So we're going to sew um, our middle rows to our end row and then we'll open it up and sew our last row to our middle row. And just as a reminder, when you guys are doing this um, for your star points, you do want them to overlap a little bit. And so it looks like they're not going to, if you're new to these, um, you do want that to overlap and it overlaps a quarter of an inch. So the reason for that is when you sew it in place, that quarter inch seam will hit right about here and then it will look like, you know, it comes straight to a V. So that's the reason that these pieces overlap a little bit right there. So in case you were curious about that. So now I'm going to just start sewing these. I'm gonna scooch this over so you guys can see a little bit better. And we're just going to start sewing. So I'm gonna take this piece, I'm going to put it right sides together. So middle piece, top, row onto the left piece top row and I'm lining everything up and I'm just going to sew and then we're going to repeat with the center our little shoe fly section we're going to place this right sides together on the left side of our star points and I didn't cut my threads I am just continuing to sew down my block here. And now we're going to get to the last row. And I'm going to flip the um, last star section over onto the left side corner. And we're going to sew. Super fast and fun. And again, if we're doing two of these at the same exact time, because we need two for our finished quilt, I would cut my threads here and then assemble the next block because I wouldn't want my block pieces to get confused. So now when we open this back up, we have all of our left seam pieces sewn and we're going to do the exact same thing with the right side pieces. So now I'm going to place this right sides together with the center and hopefully those don't fall off onto the floor. Can you guys hear the rain? It's not too bad right now, but it was raining hard just a few minutes ago. And it's gotten quite dark outside. Hopefully you can still see me okay. <laughs> I added an extra light um, to this week because I was afraid it was gonna get really dark. Okay, so now I'm opening up and I've got one last star side for the left, uh, for the right side, and that's going in place onto the center piece. And again, you wanna lift up those your presser foot when you hit those seam allowances, rather than just sewing over them and um, that way that your seam allowances lay nice and flat when you press your block. And then I'm just opening up this last side and I have one left corner, one last corner left and I'm going to place that in place on the middle bottom section. And that is all of our block pieces. 
So now when I open those up, you can see that the rows are all sewn together and they are held together with our little threads. So you can kind of see there's space there. Um, so now again, we're gonna press and I'm going to press these as the pattern shows me. And, um, and I'm again pressing, well, I'm doing this at a very awkward angle. I'm pressing on the wrong side and then I'm gonna flip it over and press on the right side to make sure that my seams look nice and flat. So this is going to take me just a second because we have a little bit more pressing to do here. What did I do? Oh yeah. And again, you're making sure that you are pressing each row the seams opposite each other because we want those seams to nest together. Just like we did in the middle of the um, churn dash section, we wanted them to, to nest together. We want them to nest together in this one too. So I just hit that with a little bit of spray starch so that it lays a little bit flatter, which is handy because that's what the spray starch is named, it's flatter. <laughs> Okay, so now um, we have our block and it looks pretty and nice and flat. So now I am here, let me just kind of tilt this down for you guys. Now I'm going to flip this over and my threads are keeping everything in place for me. And it's also kind of a good guide to make sure that you don't flip a, I don't know, I find I make less mistakes this way with, with sections of my block being flipped if everything's held together in the direction it's supposed to be. So um, I'm going to flip the top row down onto the middle row. I'm finding that seam right there and I'm going to just do a little pin where that seam is. Same with this seam. And I'm going to pin this. I'm very excited for my cat pins. Once those come in, I will be using those instead. Um, and those should be this month, you guys really anxious for them to come. They are so, so cute. Um, so now I'm just kind of sewing my first row to my middle row. Again, lifting at the, let me get you guys over here. Lifting at the um, seam allowances, making sure my seams are lined up taking those pins out at each seam so that I don't sew over them and break a needle. Because that would be very sad. Mm -hmm. And you can see my laser's still on. I do tend to leave that on most of the time. It just is um, so handy. And it can also kind of be a nice guide for your seam allowance. So I have sewn this side of the block, which is really the top and the middle. Now I'm going to flip this over and sew the bottom row to the middle and I'm lining up those seams again. Everybody doing okay? Judy says she's waiting for fabric. Okay, Judy, that's awesome. I'm so glad that you are sewing along with us. I do have a couple of the Stardust um, Swinging on a Star kits still in my shop, so if you wanna check that out. I've also linked to all the other places that, are, that I have found, I think there's more. But um, I just did actually find found Stardust at fabric.com as well this weekend. So I added it to the Stardust list of shops. You can find that on my blog. I try and keep those updated as I find things. So if you're looking for a fabric collection of mine, um, you can check those lists of shops that I have found it at. And they care everything from yardage to pre-cuts to um, the quilt kits and I try and specify too. There are also um, shops on that list that have kitted up um, other quilts that I designed to go with um, Stardust. So that's really fun if you're wanting to make the like the Penny Serenade or the uh, String of Pearls quilt. Okay, so here is our cute little block. So um, that's all there is to it. It's all sewn together and you can see that everything lines up nice and cute. All of our points go in and it just needs a little press. I'm gonna press that really quick and then we are done, you guys, with this one. And again, this week 
we are only making two of these little guys. So if you are um, still sewing up your framed economy blocks or your patchwork stars, this is a great week to kind of work on some of those other ones as well. So that um, if you want to um, be on the same schedule, again, there's no pressure about that, you can. So here is our cute block. Isn't it so fun? Okay, I'm going to flip some things around and I'm going to put the um, camera back on the main camera so you guys can see me and then we're going to talk about other stuff. There we go. So I'm going to move that out of the way. So now we have our two um, shoe fly stars all done and ready. So um, that's super fun. I hope you guys like that block. I had a really good time designing it. I wanted something to have a cute center that blended with everything else. And I think that shoe fly makes a darling little center. So next week we are going to sew up our large patchwork stars, patchwork stars. Um, those are nice big blocks, but same methods that we've used so far. The corners are the little churn dashes like we made for the center of our blocks this week. The patchwork is very similar to last week's blocks with the patchwork center. Um, there's just more of it. And um, then um, it has the big star points that match our border. So you can see that block right here. And there's two of those. There's one in the top right, and then there's one in the bottom left of the quilt. So it makes a fun addition for to have those giant blocks. So the couple things that I want to show you guys coming up, we have um, a new sew along after this one. It's gonna start at the end of July for my fabric collection that is arriving in stores this week. You guys, I'm so excited. I've already gotten a couple notifications from shops that they're getting it in um, and it's called Christmas Adventure. It is um, a Christmas collection that is very similar to my very first collection with uh, Riley Blake, which was called Vintage Adventure had really cute campers and bikes and um, had hot air balloons and it was all about just you know vintage travel which I love so this is um, my Christmas version of that collection it um, has really cute little Christmas campers scattered all over it there's ornaments there's Christmas presents there's um, Christmas lights little quilty snowflakes all kinds of fun stuff there is a little bit of gold um, glitter ink on that one as well. It's not the antique gold that's on Stardust. It's a little bit brighter, but it fits better with the brighter gold fits better with that collection. And we're going to do a sew along with that also. So the quilt is called the Christmas Adventure Row Quilt. Hello. That was quite loud. Yes. There we go. That was very obnoxious. I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> So it's called the Christmas Adventure Quilt um, and it's a row quilt. So if you did the um, swing, uh, Singing in the Rain quilt, um, that is going to be very similar. We will do, a, each row has its own kind of theme. So the top row is like a little quilt star. The second row is holly. The third row are little hearts. The fourth is um, a a little row of campers. Then we have a row of ornaments, a row of presents, and a row of Christmas trees. And we are going to do that as a sew along and that we will do every row a different week. So for those um, rows, I will show you how to sew through one element in that and then you can make all of the elements um, for the row. So, and I have tips for you guys each week and ways to make it fun and we're gonna do the exact same thing that we do with this quilt and that we're going to work on um, um, giveaways and all kinds of stuff. It's gonna be a blast. So I do not have um, Riley Blake kits like we did with um, Stardust or Swinging on a Star in Stardust. So where you get the keepsake box and everything. So I'm not gonna have kits for that, but there are several shops that are kitting up Christmas, the Christmas Adventure Row quilt. Um, so I am, I've started my shops list as I'm starting to see that come in. It's very short right now because it's just now arriving in stores and a lot of places don't have the pre, pre-sale options. So, um, but I've linked to the information on that. So along in today's video 
and the Christmas Adventure Shops um, page. So check back on that often. You can pre-order it in a few places or you can do the thing where you like put your email in and they'll send you a notification when it comes in if you want to get that kit and sew along with us. So that'll be several weeks. We'll start the last week in July and then we'll go into August and September. So it's going to be really fun and um, I just love doing those quilts with you guys. So that's coming up. And then I wanted to talk to you about a couple other things which I forgot to link to, but we are going to, um, I will link to them later. I have a new thread collection with um, Arfil that is arriving in stores now. I don't have my boxes yet, but I do know that um, Fat Quarter Shop does have these in. So it's called Colorful Vintage, and this box is completely full of floss. So there's 10 um, Orofil floss spools in here and I'm going to show you guys what they look like. Um, and it is a really fun pretty assortment of colors. There are um, there's like a creamy like sand color and then there's a reddish color. Then I have a couple pinks, a lighter pink and a medium pink. And I can't stand these up because they're in plastic. There is a really pretty mustard gold. Then I have a couple blues, um, an aqua and a denim kind of blue. And then I have two greens, a light green, a dark green. And then I have a really pretty like steel gray. So I let you guys know I love Orofil. Um, I love their wooden spools. They make organizing floss so much easier. Plus you get more on each um, spool. There's 18 yards on an Orofil spool as opposed to, I think it's eight on the DMC floss. Um, and that way I feel like there's just less for me to keep track of. <laughs> and I like that. Um, so you can check these out at Fat Quarter Shop. Um, I will have them in my shop eventually as well. Um, but I don't have them yet. They're on their way to me. So I will definitely post in the group when those come. So, um, but again, the collection's called Colorful Vintage. You can ask your local quilt shop about them as well. And um, the, the print on the front is a little sneak peek at a fabric collection that is coming out next year. So here's a little sneak peek of what's coming. So that's fun. Um, and then I just wanted to do one more thing is a quick reminder that um, Backwater Shop has an exclusive pattern of mine that is made up in Stardust. It's called the Daydream Table Runner and it looks like this. And it is a really fun, cute table runner. And they do have kits of this so you can pick them up um, and you can make up this quilt pretty quickly in a weekend. It's or the little runner. It's super fast and fun. And um, they also have the PDF version of the pattern if you want to make it up in your own fabric. So you can check Fat Quarter Shop for that. It's called the Daydream Table Runner. Um, and I will link to that in today's video as well. So that is all the things, you guys. Don't forget if you are um, Fran, is it Fran? Yes, Fran Williams um, Sanchez, you are the winner of last week's giveaway. If you want to be entered for this week's giveaway for the Sew Sampler box, leave a comment and that's whether you're watching live or you're watching later in the week. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me on Mondays. I have so much fun with you and I hope you're enjoying the sew along. I would love to see your blocks. Um, post them in the group or post them on Instagram and use the hashtag swinging on a star S-A-L um, so that we can all see them and I will check you guys out next week. Talk to you later. Bye.